All right. So, small idea here, the remainder here. If I told you f of x is 4x to the fifth plus 2x to the third plus x squared minus 1, I told you find f of negative 1. What would you do? Plug in negative 1. Yeah. So we're going to get negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. We're going to get 4 times negative 1 to the fifth plus 2 times negative 1 to the third plus negative 1 squared minus 1. So a little work here. Negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1, so it's going to be negative 4. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 1. Those cancel out. And so we get negative 6. All right. Easy, right? There's another way you can do this. It's called the remainder theorem. Here's the basic idea. You remember synthetic division? Okay. 4 x to the fifth plus 0 x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 1x squared. Uh, there were 0 x's and then minus 1. Let's do synthetic division here. If I do that, 4 plus 0 is 4. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Add them together. Negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. Negative 6. Negative 5, right? Negative 1 times negative 5 is 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. Negative 5. I add these two together, I get negative 6. That's the remainder, correct? Pretty cool, right? The rem if I, so if I do synthetic division, the remainder is the same thing as just if I plugged it in. We're not going to prove this theorem, okay? Do you have to use this theorem? No. I but it's something you can do just for fun, okay? Just another way to, to use it. Uh, just give me another tool in your arsenal when you have to divide things, okay? Here is the big idea, though. Checking for factors. Uh, let's see here. So yesterday we were factoring things, and we did it by like grouping and by uh, changing to a quadratic and by sum up cube and different cube formulas. But obviously they're not all going to turn out that nice and neat, are they? We know this has three different factors. We don't know what they are, though. Is there a way we can figure out what they are? Well, this one, they gave us a clue. But how can we tell if something's a factor? Well, how do we tell if 7's a factor of 1841? What would you do to check to see if it's a factor? Anybody? Factor tree? Divide by 7. Divide by 7? OK. Yeah. So to do a factor tree, you'd still have to divide. So you got it right, got it right. So 1841 divided by 7. Now that goes in twice. 14 gives me 4. 6 times. 42. 21. 7. That goes in 3 times. 21. 0. Oh! The remainder was 0, so is it a factor? Remainder equals zero, so seven is a factor. We can do the same thing over here. Is x minus three a factor of x to the third plus four x squared minus fifteen x minus eighteen? We can't factor this by grouping. We can't turn this into a quadratic. 
can't do sum or difference of cubes. So we have to do divide. How about instead of, we can do long division, but how about we do synthetic? Okay. So it's going to be 1x cubed plus 4x squared minus 15x minus 18. What number goes in the captain's chair up here? Three, yes. You set this equal to zero. So the zero is three. So is three one of the zeros? Let's check. That gives us one. One times three is three. That gives us seven. 21 gives us six. Three times six is 18, which gives us zero. The remainder is zero. So is it a factor? It absolutely is. The remainder is zero, so it's a factor. So we can rewrite this as x minus 3 times, what would this turn into? Well, it was cubed, so we just got to take one degree off, right? So it's going to be? 1x squared plus 7x plus 6. But wait! We can factor that! That's exciting! That's factorable! We can have more fun! What factors of 6 add up to 7? 6 and 1, right? x plus 6 x plus 1. And we still have x minus 3 out of 5. We just factored that. Granted, they gave us a clue. But we factored it. And what if I said, solve this? What would you do? Yep, set it equal to 0 and... Yep, 3, negative 6, negative 1. Pretty simple. So this is a step on into what we're going to be doing in 5, 7, 5, 8, okay? Because right now they're giving us one of the factors. They're saying, hey, is that a factor? Eventually we're going to have to figure out what can be factors. So we have to eventually we'll we'll have to figure out what numbers should we even be trying, okay? We're not there yet. It's fine. But this is a step into the next few sections. So to check if it's a factor, just divide. Then maybe you can factor the rest. Pretty cool when you can. So checking for factors, plug it in. Remainder theorem, you don't have to use this, but you plug it in, do synthetic division. The remainder is the same thing as if you plugged it in. We good?